Well, she was tested on an out of competition test. Um, I believe it was January 24th. She was notified, um, I think, the Thursday evening, uh, February 15th. I think um, she lets us know on the morning of the 16th before she went to practice that morning. Um, so that's sort of when the chain of events started on our end. Um, I think what happens in these situations is the A sample is tested, the athlete is identified, and then the athlete is allowed to ask for uh, the B sample to be opened as well. So I believe that's what happened with Brianne was she at that point had asked for the B sample to be opened. We um, are kind of bystanders in this at this point. Um, you know, she has her right to due process and her right to appeal, which she will, you know, we totally support for all of our athletes in any of these situations. Um, so she'll go through the process and whatever the final decision is by um, court for arbitration for sport um, is what we will follow. We've had um, findings before in, in the sport of curling, um, but yeah, nothing nothing that has came up for us in, in these timelines, at least in, in my recollection. Um, and then um, other than the, you know, the one with uh, the alternate for uh, in 2014, but uh, I mean, um, yeah, it was it's a little different getting this news uh, the morning of the start of the Scotty's Tournament Arts. Yeah. You have empathy for every anybody who's going through something. But that being said, you know, Curling Canada, and you know, even when I was an athlete, we we believe in in safe sport and clean sport, and so that's why we're a signatory to. Um, to the anti-doping code and, and why we totally support it and will continue to.